Hey guys, Elijah here, back with another video. This video is going to be the second part to the Jungle Climb series. And in the first video, we talked about Jungle Climb, how we made it, my inspiration for it. And towards the end of it, I talked about how I fixed some bugs, right? And with that, I actually ended up recording way more than the demo of my video. I, the original video is actually 28 minutes long, so I split into three parts. And this is the second part where I talk about programming and also how I view it and its subcategories. That's all my opinion. So I hope you enjoy this video and yeah, let's get into it. So there's three skills, right? There's problem solving, which is, you know, you have those contest questions you have those content. Here are the high scores, by the way. I added a high scores feature. It's like in a text file, so it saves, right? So let me go over what was I talking about? Yes, so pro there's three, at least three things in what I call software engineering or, you know, programming. It doesn't really matter to me. To me, all of it falls under one category, right? There's, so let's get. So the first thing that everyone should be good at is problem solving. So this would be like the contest questions. For me, it was the, I was practicing through the Canadian competition, Canadian computing competition. So that's run by Waterloo, University of Waterloo. And I basically learned from that. But I think it was because of my strong logical background that I found those questions easy. So I'm not sure if it's because I was already good at logic or if you know, I, I slightly learned, I'm not sure, because I, I just got the hang of it really quickly, it wasn't much trouble, the only trouble I had was, you know, with the hardest, harder questions, where instead of using my intuitive thinking, I had to, you know, use knowledge, and, you know, when you're learn when you have to learn knowledge to, like, you know, solve problems, it's not really about you you using your thinking you're not really thinking to me at least to me you're not thinking you're just taking someone else's knowledge and slightly tweaking it right and up to that point I just said you know what I'm not really interested anymore I I use my intuitive skills to get this far I don't really plan on you know studying all this number theory all these algorithms I mean some of them are actually relatively easy like the graphing algorithms like breadth first search and depth first search those are really nice to even learn i remember when i was i had to come up with the solution and i implemented it and i think it was because one of the problems i solved actually because i used a different data structure a set compared to a dictionary and yeah so that was it for that and what else? Oh yeah, so that that's one part. Problem solving is one part. The other problem, the other part is debugging. So when you problem solve, right? The chances of you, sorry, when you code in general, the chances of you or me getting it right the first time is never a hundred percent. Just today, I was programming for my job, and and it wasn't just today. It was like uh, on Friday too. I had misspelled snapshot three times, like incorrectly three times. So I spelt it wrong the first time. I realized my mistake. I spelt it wrong a second time. I <laughs> and I think I realized that today. Yeah. So not not three times, two times. And yeah, that that was just my issue. My my 10 minute issue just boiled down to how I spelt a word compared to the source of what I, of how I was supposed to spell it. I was just like, damn, I really spelt that wrong. So anyways, now we're moving on to the third thing, which is not so much like the logical part, but the user experience. I don't know why there's a thing called, actually, now I know why there's a thing called UX, user experience. So why it's, I always thought, why is it not just, you know, put into, put in, in the same basket as UI? But then I realized not everyone is making programs in terms of the user experience. Uh, it took me a while to understand this, but actually it didn't take me a while, but I was just confused and it, I realized it because for me, I'm a person who likes user experience and likes putting user experience first. Everything I make is so that the user has an easy time doing what they want to do, right? 
I messed up with this video by actually delaying the time I took to start the intro, but you know, I made this video, not just a demo, but overall a programming video. So that's one, so that's an example. So when you're making a video, like a how-to video, instead of all this gibberish of jargon that you're just putting at the start of the video, you can cut that out. You can just get right into it. It's so much better for the user if you do it that way, right? And I did this, I do this with my programs as well, like my music player. Uh, I have a video on separately too, right? It's just here in the corner and you can just play it like that. You don't have to, you don't have to open a UI. You don't have to double click anything. There's a whole button called play all. So it just scans the folders that you specified and it just plays, shuffles them and plays them. It's just that easy, right? The whole point of my music player is not just to be able to play on a Chromecast. It's also to get into the music quickly. I don't want to think about what song I want to hear all the time, right? Because that only happens when I'm listening to one song on repeat, which happens a lot actually, because I'm not the type of person to shuffle my music always. I like, I have one song per week. That if I found a new song and I like it a lot, I just play it on repeat. And you know, I think I can get a week by just listening to the same song. I never get bored, it's, it's insane. Anything else like food, <laughs> I get bored, but yeah, for some reason, that's something I don't get bored. Okay, so that's user experience. So when you're making things and you're doing anything, make sure you are putting the user, you're looking at your product from a different perspective. I'm lucky that the products I make, sorry, the programs I make, even the, actually the products too, that I make are, okay, so as I was saying, always try to put the, so when you're making a video or a product or a program, always think about it from the user point of view because in most cases or some cases, you may not actually be the user. So you have no clue what you're doing. You're just programming, uh, what's that called? Function over experience, which isn't always good because in a competitive world, user experience beats functionality. That's why MP3 is used instead of any of the other audio codecs because it just, it came first, right? Nobody cares if it's not the best. It just came first. So it has that and it's supported by a lot of music players, right? That just a really, that's also not the best example. There are other examples. There's probably just, oh yeah, the marketing examples where a product is marketed more so that it appears to be good but in fact it's overpriced because of the marketing so for that i'd be like beats beats has more marketing so that's why they're more expensive <laughs> and that's why people actually buy it i don't think people would actually buy beats because of you know an unbiased opinion they definitely saw an advertisement or yeah something promoting it and for me, I have all, all my ads are blogs. So I mean, I don't really see ads. I've, I don't even have TV, right? I don't watch TV. So I've never, I haven't had cable in almost seven years. So yeah, I don't see any ad advertisements. So that's all so good. So now that's a third thing. I think I could shove a fourth thing. Another thing, yeah. So another thing is that I may be a programmer, but my voice is getting frail every time I make it. Yeah, every time I make a video, my voice always gets frail. So like, I don't always sound, I start off the video really nice. And then as I talk more, my voice, I just start to lose my voice. It's actually horrible. I think I need to just start talking a lot more and making more videos. So as I was saying, right, I'm recording this gameplay as I'm talking. So that's why I was paused. So as I was saying, right, there are, there might be, yeah, there is a fourth thing. So this isn't really, I noticed that I'm not, I'm not the average. I'm, I'm an outlier. I'm going to be honest with you. I think I'm an outlier, outlier in the sense that most programmers might not even be good at using technology. Like I'm good at using technology. So I don't even know about that. Are programmers good at using technology? I thought, I always assume so, but you know, the, the, why, why do those memes like I'm not, I'm a software engineer. I'm not a tech support guy. I'm like, what? <laughs> You're a software engineer. You make software. You need to, how do you not know how to use technology? You know, 
So that's that's always like oh that always got me. Like before I was a programmer, I was always good at technology. So you know, I didn't really see why software engineers were bad at using technology, or how could they, right? But you know, you never know about that. So. So the thing is, you want to focus on productivity as well as your side hobbies. And by side hobbies, I don't mean, I don't mean just, I don't know, like knitting. No, no, no. That's not what I mean. I mean that if you were, if you were to start your own business, what skills would you need, right? So that those are the skills that are pretty nice to use as a hobby. So obviously doing the legal stuff is not going to be a good hobby but what i'm actually trying to get at is is graphic designing okay i am not i think everyone should have a bit of graphic design to, so they can work their creative part of their mind because otherwise you just you just go into these building blocks like like look at these platforms they're just blocks all right you don't want to just do a block so look at this character right this character's not a block this is you can tell it took work to get this character right i didn't i didn't make the character but the per the author took work to make this character compared to the platform which is just like you know repetitive thinking so you don't want to get into that repetitive thinking so that's why you need something some creative hobby so that you can work the other side of other part of your brain so that you can actually think differently about how you code like my code isn't I don't think the creative part I use in graphic design actually follows over to the programming part of my programs, but it does play a good role in the user experience because I can actually, by my minimal Photoshop skills, I can actually make these assets. Like you, you see these assets. I kind of I made I made these three. I think I may or may not have made this. I didn't make this, but I did. I did invert it and sh and stuff. So, you know, just knowing how to invert stuff is good enough to, right? As you can see, I think I made the X though. So I made the X there, right? So knowing a bit of graphic design will help you in your programming, not programming, but you know, just small stuff. So instead of having to find something for free, you can actually make it yourself. I think, a really good example of this was something I made recently in Adobe Illustrator. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I made I made this icon for my quest raid. Right? I made this circular thing, the circular refresh arrow, right? I have followed a tutorial on YouTube and I made it. It's a really so it's not that hard, you know to get, get the basic skills. So I always think you need to have the basic skills. I would rather be a jack of all trades and a master of none than a master of one, right? That rhymed really well. That's just my personal opinion. I'm not, because you can do a lot more by being a jack of all trades than being a master of one. Like all these experts in one field, like what, that's all they do. That's all they have to them. That's all those skills they have kind of fun is that you need you need to diversify your skills you diversify your portfolio so obviously you're going to diversify your skills it makes like why would you put all your not just all your eggs in one basket why would you put all your fun that you can get in one basket right you need to diversify your skill portfolio so that you can not just have something to start working with to your job that ties you to your job but also something that you can have fun with doing as a hobby right and my hobby I, I would say is programming like programming is one of my hobbies but you know I always sometimes I'll in a once in a blue moon or something maybe more often now but or I think before programming I was doing it too a bit a bit you know a bit but just the basics and now I still do it sometimes right I just it's just such a useful skill for me that and I have fun doing it, right? Like I'll, I have these creative works. I'll sh I'll show you my deviant art, right? It's not that much, but I think this is what I did two years ago. This is what I did two years ago, but I made it into wallpapers in twenty nineteen, late twenty nineteen, which is six months ago, right? And this is actually the the top left one you see is actually the one I use, 
and I gave it to my friend, and my friend also uses this one. He liked it a lot. I'm gonna make one, make another couple wallpapers soon. And this red one, I think my dad uses, and this green one, my mom uses. And yeah, the white ones are just there for show, in my opinion. I don't think anyone will actually use a white wallpaper. I don't like white themes or light themes, right? And there's another thing. Yeah, these, these, this is actually my profile picture. Like, my profile pictures for all my accounts are my content. Imagine being able to, like, you know, do this abstract art and, and own it. Like, it feels so nice being, for me to be able to make something and actually use it in my profile pictures and my, just, even on my phone, just opening, just turning on my phone and I see my wallpaper. I remember the first time, it was so nice. Like, it feels so good. I don't know, but you should really try and do it like I'm not even an artist I have no artistic like I can't draw but I still manage to do this it's not so there's no excuse like oh I'm not artistic I'm not creative it's actually relatively easy you just have to put in motivation that's all that's all everyone says it man like all these motivational speakers you don't even have to hear them they're, they're, they're preaching the same thing which is just do it just get started don't don't go to these motivational speakers. If you're motivated enough to go to these motivational speakers, you're mo you should be motivated enough to just start. Just do your research right off the bat. Just get started right now, right? And do it, right? That's all it takes. The hardest part though would probably be when you start <laughs> getting started, right? Like for me, if you ever start a new if you ever have tried to clone an open source project. You may or may not have, but I'll tell you what it goes like. You clone it, you download it, right? So you're motivated enough to actually start working on it. So you clone it, and then you have to get your environment set up. And this part is just a pain. It's a pain to do, and it just takes away half your morale. And then you do, and once you get through that, that's like one obstacle, one barrier. That's the first barrier. The second barrier is after you program it. You have to do a pull request and you have to do all these comments. Yeah, and that's just that just the cost, man. You have to get through that. You have to think about that. And you have to, fa I think, you, yeah, you'd have to factor it in if you actually want to do, get motivated. Like recently, I watched the video on how to lose some body fat because, you know, I'm, I want to get fit, <laughs> get more fit. So I was watching the video and I said, you know what, I will, I'll do more than just my cardio, you know, I'll start today. So I just, at the end of the day, at 4 o'clock or 4.30, 4.15, I said, okay, so let's do some, let, let me do some, what did I do? I don't even, oh, yeah, so I did my push-ups like I usually do, and then I did my, and then I said, you know what, I'll also work the abs because this guy said you should work on the abs because as you lose fat you want to show progress you want to you want to, you'll be able to see the progress with those muscles and you know I hadn't I haven't done abs in so long because my abs used to be like I'd say strong like obviously you wouldn't be able to see them because of my layer of fat but I I would say personally that my abs were pretty good in pretty good shape for you know how I looked and I just stopped because I said, you know what, there's all this fat, so I need to get rid of that first. But you know what, this guy motivated me because I want to get fit, so I'm putting in the work. I'll put in the work for my diet. And I am sorry for taking this long, but, you know, this video turned out to be more than just the demo. It turned out to be uh, just advice in general about programming, about living your life. and But anyways, yeah. I hope you took something value out of this other than the demo of the of my game. And I hope you took in some value about not just programming, but like living your life, having some sort of creative side hobby because it works your brain and being motivated and what actually what it means to be motivated, right? It's not it's not just being motivated to reach your goal. It's being motivated to go it to deal with the obstacles in the way. Cause that those obstacles will try to put you down. Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe I'll upload the third part in the future. I don't think I'll upload it anytime soon because it's personal, but maybe in the future. And I want you to take, what I want you to take away from this is that every 
challenge you face is not going to be as straightforward as it looks and that as soon as you start it, you should be prepared to deal with way more troubles than you anticipated. Otherwise, you really might have a hard time doing what you were motivated to do five minutes before you started the thing you wanted to do, the task you wanted to do. So I hope you got something of value from this video and be sure to let me know about your thoughts on this video. So yeah, just give me some feedback or your thoughts on the topic and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching again.